was ministering to the patients. He had a problem with his appendix which had burst. He had an operation but was still in pain. The man of God prayed for him and the healing power of God touched him. He felt something grumbling in his stomach as the man of God was praying for him. The pain was no longer there when he checked himself after prayer. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Every morning at 6 a.m. from Monday to Friday, we have our morning prayer, which is at 7 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Our midday service starts at 5 to 12, and then we have our evening service, which starts at 6 p.m. every night. Our midnight prayer starts at 5 to 12 every night, and we have our and we also have our weekly prayer and fasting, which is on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. The details of the fasting are shared on our different WhatsApp groups. Amen. Tonight we will get the word of God from the book of Jeremiah, Amen. chapter 17, from verse 3 NIV. It reads as follows My mountain in the land, and your wealth, and all your treasures, I will give away as plunder together with your high places because of sin throughout your country. Through your own fault, you will lose the inheritance I gave you. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land you do not know, for you have kindled my anger, and it will burn forever. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in men, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the past places of the desert, in a south land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when it comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their needs deserve. Amen. 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 Also tonight, you will have a privilege to go through the word of God together, believing the word of God to be taught with power power of the Holy Spirit, power to heal, power to bless, power to protect in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Then let us go through the word of God from the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse number 3. My, my mountain in the land and your wealth and all your treasures I will give away as a plunder together with your high places because of sin throughout your country and then here we are hearing God talking to the children of of Judah as he's talking to the children of Judah, God says, due to sin, their wealth, their treasures, he will give away. He will give away together with their, with their high places as a plunder. And the reason why he said that he's going to give them away, he will give away because of sin. The problem was sin. Hallelujah. Amen. The problem is sin. Amen. Sin, the problem with sin is that it separates us from God. It separates us from God, God who loves us, God who wants to bless us, God who wants to prosper us. 
God who wants to do wonderful things in our life, no matter how much He wants to do and no matter how much He loves us and He loves His children. God who wants to make them number one, but no matter how much He loves them, but when He sees sin, He can't do so anymore. That's why here, it was now God who was saying that he will give their wealth, he will give their treasures. You know, he will give it away because of sin that was there in the country. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go also to the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse number 4. Through your own fault you will lose they will lose their inheritance God have given them. I will enslave you. They were going to be enslaved in the land to the land that they did not know. For they have kindled the God's anger See now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They were losing. How many people are losing opportunities? How many people are losing blessings? How many people are losing things that God have blessed them with? Only due to sin. Sin is costly. Sin is costly. Amen. And some people, you know, because what you have to understand is that without sin, the devil is powerless. Amen. But sin empowers the devil. And after that, he is able to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Then that's why sin remains one of the biggest weapons of the devil. When the devil wants to destroy somebody, when the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy, if you are a child of God, living a holy life, he won't be able to do so. He may plan, he may try, but and he will not be successful. And the reason why he won't be able to be successful is because when you are living a holy life, when you are living a holy life, God protects you in such a way that the devil cannot do anything about it. Even though the devil wants to still kill and destroy, he won't be able to because God is going to be to protect you from all the weapons of the enemy. Amen. That's why we we hear about the the story of Job when the devil says that no, even though he wanted to attack Job. Even though he wanted to steal, to kill, and to destroy in the love of Job. But as long as there was a hedge around Job's life, he was not able to carry out what he wanted to carry out in the life of Job because God had built a hedge around, a protecting hedge around everything that Job owns. And it's very, very much important is that that means because God loves you so much, because God loves us so much in such a way that God says that we we are like an apple of God's eye. In the apple of God's eye in such a way that God does not want anything to touch us. God does not want anything to touch you. 
God wants to protect you. Amen. But now, Amen. when you are living a holy life, God is able to protect everything that you own. Amen. And God is able to protect us. Amen. But the moment you sin, even Amen. though God wants to protect you, God is not able to protect Hallelujah. Amen. God is not able to protect due to sin. And that's why as a children of God is very much important for us to know and for us to understand. You know like to the devil. You know, it's like when the devil want to steal kill and to destroy one of the first thing that he does he leads somebody to temptation and once they are tempted and the hedge is is gone then he's able to steal kill and to destroy then to the children of god sin is poisonous Amen. and that's not how the devil protects him how the devil want to portray sin it is as if it is it is good sin is good sin is attractive you know like it is as if when you want to kill a rat most of the time when you want to kill a rat sometimes they will even make a they can even give that uh, that red seven colors some you you will it will think that this, this there's nothing wrong with this thing that has been given and that red will will think oh, this is just a cheese innocent cheese but today this is not just a cheese it's a trap which is meant to kill the red then it's like that Most of the time when the devil want to still kill and destroy he does not make his traps and his plan to be so dangerous they don't look so dangerous no it's a trap he want to make it to make you to feel like oh this is going to be one of the best time of your life it's one of the best time of your life if you have this you, it's, it's, it's as if you are going to enjoy but you are not going to enjoy it is not you are not going to enjoy it's a trap where the devil is trying to trap you so that he may steal so that he may kill and so that he may destroy i think it's about time when the when as the children of god we understand that the devil does not love you the devil does not love us and the devil will never love you Amen. i want you to understand because Amen. the devil will never ever love you Amen. he may pretend as if he loves you but the the fact of the matter is the devil will never love you amen the devil hate a human being amen. to the core amen he doesn't want to see the human being because it was as if god replaced the devil the devil who was angel lucifer angel lucifer who was in heaven serving god having two offices an office of an archangel and essence being in an office of a cherubim and when you go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 you read and you find how he was beautified he was well built and all the privileges that he had but when he begin to be proud and begin to compare himself with god 
and God was offended and he chased him out of heaven. When he was chasing in a, in a out of heaven, he left heaven as a bitter. He was very bitter. He was very bitter because of what he had lost. When the enemy who is the devil sees God loving you so much. Loving us so much that he has created us in his own image. God has loved us so much. God has loved you so much. That the Bible says that he has created us in his own image. Child of God, there is no angel that has been created in the image of God. There is no angel like that. No angel is built like that. Then angel Lucifer, when he realized that he had lost the place where he used to be so treasured in the presence of the Almighty God, having the privilege to serve God, having the privilege to be a worshiper, now he's not a worshiper. And now God is also looking for you who can worship him in spirit and in truth. He hates a human being with a passion. And he looks at his life and he realizes that, okay, as a human being, you also have got a future to spend eternity in the presence of God. Then the devil, and he does not have a future when he knows that his future is going to the lake of fire to be tormented forever. Then he hates a human being with a passion. And that's why it's very, very much important for the human being to be informed that the devil does not love you. Whatever that he, he, he may try to give you and he try to promise you, it will be a trap in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. The problem is that how the devil have packaged the sin. He did not uh, package it ugly. He, does, he did not make it unattractive. He makes sin to look so beautiful. He makes sin to be enjoyable but with a, with a horrible consequences that you can even lose we can even lose a, a life and you even go to hell but as a child of God then that's why it's very very much important to know the word of God that says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free Amen. you shall know the word of God you shall know the revelatory word of God and you can and that word of God will be able to set us free will be able to set you free otherwise without the revelation of the word of God people are indulging in sin they are looking at sin as sin is it's nothing where sin is dangerous that's why we are hearing God here angry that God who have created us God who loved us God who loved them on that particular time was God who was telling them that they are going to lose everything that he have given them it's the same thing when you are talking about it then you know, the Bible will be telling us that for six days God created everything. And once he had created everything and he realized that everything is beautiful, he created Adam and Eve. Adam, then Eve. So that they can take care of Garden of Eden. So that they can enjoy God's creation and take care of it. 
but when they have sinned in the book of God, Genesis chapter 3, you begin to find an angry God who is chasing them from the place he had created them to be. I said that no, even though this I created them it for you, for you to take off it, no, get away. Because they have sinned, they lost everything. They've lost everything. And after that, when he have chased them out of Eden, the Bible says that God, he even goes further and he cursed the ground. That God was saying, that God said that before I've said, you will just, you will just enjoy everything that God you have created and take off it. But no, now you will eat out of your sweat. God loved us so much. God loved them so much. Never to eat to sweat. But when God was angry and betrayed, when men did not follow the word of God, God instruction instead of God blessing them they lose everything of what God have given them in for their enjoyment then that's why as a child of God when God has blessed you and everything is well it's very very much important to understand and realize what is it that God loves. God wants us to live a holy life. Amen. God wants us to live a righteous life. Amen. So that he may continually Amen. bless us. He may continually take care of us. Amen. The Bible says that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse number 5 this is what the Lord said curse is, the, is everyone who trusts in the man who draws strength from f- mere flesh and those whose hearts turn, turn away from the Lord the Bible is saying that you know God wants us to trust in him God wants our trust to be on God, not trust on man. That's what the Bible is saying, that cursed is anyone who is trusting in man. Trust, uh, cursed is anyone who is putting their faith and trust on man. The Bible says that, we have to trust upon God. Hallelujah. Amen. Apart everything, Amen. we must trust upon God. Amen. Amen. We must not trust in the connections of men. Let, if it's a connection of men, let it be the one that God is giving you. But at the end of the day, know that our God is the creator of heaven and the earth. Our God is the source of our blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that in verse number 7, 7 of Jeremiah chapter 17. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Blessed, the Bible is saying that, is the one who's trusting in God, who knows Jehovah as their provider. We have to know Jehovah as our provider. Amen. 
And we have to depend upon God as our provider. Amen. Your ultimate hope, ultimate trust, Amen. it must be God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But nothing else. Amen. Our ultimate trust and our ultimate hope must be God. Amen. That's what the Bible is saying, that blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. Amen. The Bible says that when we trust upon God and our, when our confidence is in God, in verse number 8, the Bible says that they will be like a tree planted by the waters that sends its roots in the streams it does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaf will always be green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. And the word of God is like, he's saying that when we are trusting upon God, the Bible says that as you are trusting upon God, you will not fear when trouble comes. Amen. You know, it, it doesn't matter where you are. Which company, which country, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether they say that. There is an eco economic crash. It doesn't matter what, whatever they say, it doesn't matter. And it will not matter why, because you are not looking on men for your provision. You are not looking on men for strategies. You are looking upon God for supernatural supply. You are looking at God for what? For supernatural supply. He's a supernatural strategist. You can ask Isaac. The Bible said that by the time of Isaac, when there was a drought, and the Bible said that when there was a drought and Isaac was planning to go to Egypt, God talked to Isaac and said, Isaac, you are son of Abraham. As long as you trust me, stay in Gera, I will perform a miracle. This is not a drought to finish you off. This is not a drought to affect your career. This is not a drought to affect your finances. But it is the drought so that you may see my power and I might I uplift you. It's the same thing when you are seeing the flood of Noah. That flood of Noah, it was not the flood to destroy Noah. It was a flood that, were, that Noah was going to see the power of God. That's why the Bible said that as it keep on raining, raining, everybody was dying. Everything was dying. Everybody was dying. But with the same rain, the Bible said that with the same rain, Noah's ark was going higher and higher. That's why as a child of God, as you are trusting upon God, it does not matter what is happen, what's going to happen in your company, what is happening in your company. It doesn't matter what is happening in your country. But as long as God is by your side and you are trusting upon God, you are safe, you are blessed. And everything will turn around for your good. Then as a child of God, it's, better to, it's best to understand that. Amen. That as long as God is by your side, that's what matters. Because he will create atmosphere of where you are. He will create an atmosphere. If you want to find out, the Bible talks about when the children of Israel are coming out of Egypt. The Bible says that by day 
There used to be a cloud which used to cover them, which was the presence of God. By night, there used to be a pillar of fire which will be also covering them and guiding them which way they should go. And the Bible said that it did not end there. The Bible said that it does not end there. It did not end there. As it did not end there, the Bible says, in a desert where there was nothing, the Bible said that God provided water out of nowhere. God provided manna. It rained food from heaven because as long as you are with God, doesn't matter where you are. He create an atmosphere. As he create an atmosphere of provision, atmosphere of protection. Doesn't matter where you are. Where you are, it begin to be in glory. A place, atmosphere which is called in glory. Atmosphere where God can provide. Atmosphere where God can protect. Then as long as God is by your side, and God will be by your side as you are trusting upon God. Trust upon God. Depend upon God. As you depend upon God, as you trust upon God, supernaturally God will provide. Supernaturally, God will provide. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I'm saying to you, you will never be stranded. Amen. As long as you keep on trusting God, you are blessed. Amen. As long as you keep on trusting God, all is well. As long as you keep on trusting God, all will be well. Then that's why I can assure you, after that, don't worry what the economics will say. Don't worry what the president of your country will say. From that moment when you trust upon God, God begins to be your supernatural source. When the Bible says that when David talks about God, David says that the Lord is my shepherd. And as the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He's a supernatural provider. He will supernaturally provide. He will supernaturally make a way where there seem to be no way. He will supernaturally Amen. make everything turn around for our good. Amen. He will supernaturally turn around everything for your good. Amen. And you will always, I speak over your source. God is your source. Amen. As God, you trust upon Amen. God and he become your source. Your pocket will never run dry. Your job will Amen. never run dry. Amen. Amen. You will never run dry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In God as our supernatural supply we live in abundance. Amen. That's what the Bible says that there will be like a tree planted by the water. The water is here. The tree is here. And this water is a supernatural water which does not run dry. That does not matter when they say that there is drought. There is no drought with this tree. I'm saying to you, child of God, there is no drought in our life. I'm saying there is no drought in our life. There is no recession in our life. I'm talking to somebody. I say to you, what when when people are going to be crying in the world, economy this, uh, fine, I don't know, whatever they will be complaining about, you will know that you will live in the presence of God. We live in the glory of the Lord. 
you will always be multiplying. Amen. You will always be growing higher and higher. Amen. You will always be growing. We will always be growing Amen. richer and richer. Amen. When others are complaining that Amen. there is no job, you will be having multiple jobs to be choosing. Amen. There will be a sign that you are living in the presence of God. Amen. There will be a sign that you are living in the power of God. Amen. And that sign is that when others are Amen. crying, when others are complaining about this and that, you will be complaining of abundance. Amen. You will be like, can I choose like or this? Can I choose Amen. that? It will be like a buffet. Amen. Your life is a buffet. Amen. Where there is always good things that you are choosing among the good. Amen. Choosing among the best. Amen. Never stranded Amen. in a little. Amen. But heavenly Amen. supplied. Amen. Heavenly being taken care of. Amen. Because the Bible is telling us that we are blessed because we trust upon God and we have got it confident in Him. Amen. Amen. Say, I live in abundance. I live in abundance. I live in prosperity. I live in prosperity. I live in success. I live in success. In the name of Jesus. Say, I trust upon God with the whole of my heart. I trust upon God with the whole of my heart. I trust upon all of my heart. God is my my provider. God is my provider. God is my defender. God is my defender. In the name of Jesus. God is my defender. The name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray wherever you are, begin to thank him, begin to thank him. Turn around for 
oh my God. of 10 then let us continue to pray and let us continue to fast as you do so and uh, to those who can also be planting a seed find a ministry where you can plant a seed this season as we do so you will live in abundance you will live in prosperity you will live in success you are unstoppable. Amen. Everything is turning around for our good. Amen. All is well. Amen. All is well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to say to you tonight, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Bye bye everybody. Have a blessed morning. Day and afternoon and night. Amen. Bye bye.